What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be with Genfinity at Hello Future Live, celebrating all things Hedera Network and Hedera ecosystem. Extremely excited to have one of the projects that has been certainly talked about uh, over the past month, uh, very much so. Um, the CEO of Drop, Sushil Prabhu, and. If you guys aren't aware, Drop is a micropayment service built on Hedera to enable small value transactions and uh, in a pay-per-use economy for merchants and consumers. So, Shio, I've got to ask you first and foremost, uh, for those not aware, I think we dropped this where you guys were integrated into the FedNow uh, service yes. provider showcase. Can you talk about the lead up into uh, that integration, what that sure. looked like, how much time it took? Yeah, uh, let me take a, yes, absolutely, I, I can go with that. Let me take a step back just for the audience sure. in terms of explain them why we even went in that direction is, you know, we at Drop, we envision uh, there's going to be a global revolution in instant payments. And this is going to be a new alternative offered to consumers and merchants, uh, an alternative to credit card, right? And the emergence of Web3 technologies and the emergence of banking rails. These are two technologies that are now going to offer you instant payments. Web3, we already know cryptocurrencies offer you instant payments. And so is uh, the banking rails. There's a lot going on in the banking rails. Not much innovation has happened in banking in the last 50 years. And then suddenly we have the Fed now making an announcement of the Fed now instant payment. 2017-16, we had the clearing house making an announcement of RTP, which does instant payment. So we we see that the there is going to be an alternative to instant payments, like and there, there are going to be more products like Drop, which will offer that. So we leverage both these technologies. We've been working with the clearing house by working. I mean, we've been in discussions with the clearing house. Uh, and then last November is the uh, is when we did a presentation in one of the RTP, which is real time payment. Uh, um, uh, convention in, in New York. And that's when the first interaction took place where we met some of the folks from the Fed now. They were interested. Uh, the product looked, I, I always use the word cute, meaning it was great. Because if you look at all of these rails, whether it's Web3 or it's instant payments, they're really a pipe, right? A pipe between point A and point B where you can move the money. But there's nothing on the either of the edges. That's where Drop fits in. We provide all the payment capabilities that you need so that you can do that payment as a merchant and as a consumer, right? So definitely there was a lot of interest from them. We met with them in March and then April, and then they uh, suggested that we should be on their showcase. And uh, we answered all their questions and then that's how we got in the showcase. Yeah, I mean, especially seeing the digital shift that is certainly coming down the pipeline, how important from a from a let's say from an institutional level or from a banking level or whatever it may be for payments to really be programmable because you you mentioned it there really hasn't been that much innovation in the banking system or in payment systems for about 50 years even in the united states like right. look at um um fed now i mean there's some other nations that have done it way sooner i mean yes. this is not revolutionizing a, a whole lot but like having that ability to really streamline and leverage distributed ledger technology built on Hedera with what Drop is doing, it just gives uh, consumers options, right? Absolutely. And how important are those options? Uh, it, it's really, uh, thanks for ask, asking this question, which I should have made it earlier. So the the instant payment itself is, is great and we'll have that, that, that's going to be fantastic. But what happens is when, because of these rails and because of Web3 technology and because of distributed ledger technologies, you can offer an extremely cost-effective payment platform. When you do that, basically you've lowered the barrier, you've lowered the transaction cost. When you do that, you can now offer micropayments, which is what the focus is of Drop. So right now, if you want to make a transaction for a dollar, you end up paying anything from 40 to 53 cents to the credit card provider or to the paywall, right? And that's how it is. That's, that's how the economics work. What does that mean? That means anyone who's offering any product under $10, it's, it's going to be expensive, sure. right? So we really believe, and, and that was your question is, we really believe that micropayment solutions, cost-effective micropayment solutions can really open up the, the digital market. It's already open, we are already buying, but the way we purchase digital goods in the market, like streaming, gaming, um, any content out there is subscription. 
there has to be a third alternative i'm tired of subscribing i can only subscribe so much there are there are actually services which help you cancel subscription that means people are building hacks around it that means there is a problem and so what's going to come out is not just that you can instantly pay someone which it, which itself is great for the merchants because there's an uh, incredible amount of cash flow that you can get but now you can offer far more innovation in in uh, monetization right i can now offer you pay per use i can offer you micro subscription i can do micro royalty just yesterday uh, last evening uh, there was an artist who was talking about how would they get paid 90 days and later in terms of royalty with this payment system i can when you download a music on a music site and i'm the artist i can make that 10 cents right away it's not the 10 cent that matters but when there are 1000 people downloading it becomes $1000 i get that cash right away so all sorts of things can open up when you reduce the cost of transaction and i think micro payments are certainly a unique use case too because if you think about your example of uh an artist with royalties 90 days after the fact yeah now that institution whoever's paying that artist is they're slowly accumulating there's like liquidity not getting out into the economy yeah. so with micro payments it, it allows to really streamline that process i've got to ask um you know from a network standpoint and building on top of hedera and the technology would it be possible to have built drop on other networks or do you think that hedera offers such unique properties from speed utility everything that you would want yeah. to really be able to facilitate what drop is built correct so when when you leverage web3 technologies uh for micro payments what you would look for is it needs to be cost effective i mean that's a whole that's whole point of micro payments yeah. so the hardware fees are flat fees they're flat they you know you In don't get gas tax yeah uh, yeah it's usually it's flat fee it's 0.001 right a dollar which, which is really fraction and that's why in drop specifically you can make a 1 cent transaction will charge you 0.05 cents for it which and right and i can do that right so it needs to be cheap and which which hadera is second with micro transactions you will make more of those payments in a day you'll make 10 of them if you make one credit card payment you'll make 10 of them so you need the you need the throughput you need lots of transactions uh, right now hadera is 10000 transactions a second that's plenty in general i think most credit card companies have like 3500 like visa and master i think the numbers are 3500 per second hadera is already 10000 so it's plenty for us so i think that makes a significant um, im impact and then the uh, the latency it may so there are other networks and that's not ethereum you can't do that do you can't do this in ethereum just you know sure. and, and i'm i like ethereum everything great but not even it comes to micro payment expensive slow and uh, the throughput but there are other uh, technologies which you could use we are very familiar with hadera and it just fit in very well i mean it's just built for fintech companies right so it just worked out very well the third element which is not a technology element but something unique about hadera which has helped us because we have been in conversation with major financial institution is the governing board the, the way they govern it with the governing councils from the top companies in the world that really helps us they it's not the technical security it is the fact that all of these adults are on the are on the going it really helps us so it's open access open source and then i always mention the governing council it makes a big difference you know 100% um i've got i, I want to ask you and maybe this is kind of just a little bit of a breather here what was i know that we i think posted and found the the fednow service provider showcase from our Twitter account through Genfinity but after that got posted and seeing all the traction what was the experience was it like oh my god there's how many how many different news publications and everything were we oh it was uh, it, it was an experience which uh, at some point we should at least write a blog or a chapter in a book because i think it happened like 8:30 in the night i still remember looking at hundreds of tweet with drop on it and i didn't even know it was the d drop it was some other drop that was one so it was a lot of excitement um we were a little bit concerned because i think there was a lot of people were making all sorts of uh, interpretation assumptions, assumptions yeah. and that worried us a little but by 8 in the morning by the time i was reading my emails we got about 6 or 7 requests right away from 
the telegraph from decrypt to to make uh, to make comments on that and then uh, i think edge bar bull which is brandon, brandon he he interviewed us and we wanted to go out there and explain everyone what that was but uh, it's it's uh, it's those those couple of days or that entire week is 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 an ex- has been an experience it's been good for us um but you know it's also a little bit of stress because you have to really make sure that everyone understands what it is we are not live with fed now in fact we might first go live with rtp which is real time payments from clearing house wow. before we go yeah and 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 that's how it is fed now is still young uh, it's a fantastic product and they're building up too i mean banks are slowly embracing it rtp has been there for a while so the maturity you know we have to work with the bank it's it's not that we work directly with the fed we have to work with the bank the banks have to sponsor us and the banks have to be ready with these apis for us to use it sure. right they're more comfortable right now saying here's the rtp api you can use it so we'll probably pilot with rtp first i don't have the facts in front of me but for those that aren't aware obviously the global financial system runs pretty much on swift messaging but swift messaging doesn't Swift GPI can settle if there's funds on the back and front end and the promissory notes and all that stuff. But through the clearing house, the clearing house actually settles a lot of Swift transactions. I think it's like 65 or 70%. Yeah. Um they they are a massive powerhouse. So to see you guys potentially going live with those guys first is insane and the amount of due diligence that has probably been been done to get to that point is is crazy as well. Um m- move moving from like the even from like the, the future looking uh, forward looking statements within what drop is doing uh, you, you mentioned like the nft explorer aspects that you guys are building out sure. and when you talk about real world assets coming onto these networks and ledgers what does that look like for you guys from uh, from the nft explorer aspect because a lot of people misinterpret what nfts actually do become yeah absolutely so uh, just as context drop does payment but drop uses a product called dragon glass which is also a drop product dragon glass is an explorer on hadera like what is ether scan on ethereum it's sure. the same same it's a network similar, similar thing. but what we've also done is not only can you get an api access to every transaction that takes place on hadera you can also search nfts because nft is a tokenized version of a transaction of of a transaction on 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 hadera but we've also given it a graphical interface so you can actually if you have an nft which has an image video uh and maybe very soon a three dimensional image you can actually see it on the explorer so when you search for let's say ape or something like that you will see all of the nfts the collection you can drill down you can see who minted it who has it what are the what are the other varieties you can do that Now this is the the colorful part of the NFTs but now when the NFT identities and IDs which are the real world case uh world uh, scenarios that will come out you could also that's when the NFT explorer is going to be important because the minute it or the second it gets created on Hadera you can actually use one of these explorers and figure out what that ID is and who minted it like even today the geomint uh, the the geo tagging sorry the geo tagging that was happening it was interesting uh Uh, he came over he was minting it and in 2 seconds later we could see it on the explorer and it, it's it's something you can see it graphically you can see the actual chart you can see all of that it makes a big difference you know it and it is a third party because we are not a part of the we are not minters we are just the browser that lets you browse through it so it um it's it's a third point of valid it is a second point of validation like yes it was minted in hadera and someone else you could see it so i think there's going to be a lot of value in this explorer 100% especially you know when we think about I've actually argued this point before that I I almost believe sometimes sometimes I don't sometimes I do that NFTs might represent a bigger use case and bigger market than unit of account based assets do like how many use cases exist out there you mentioned digital identity um even look look at like token you know tokenization and how they're going to have to exist on on chain or on ledger yeah. um it's it's Very, you know, very I mean NFT gating. I mean you must sort of NFT gating is yeah, like sure. you know if uh, unless you have this NFT you can't access ticketing. this website ticketing. Yeah. All of those things are, are like uh, use cases that people have been talking and now they're going to go live and you would be able to use an NFT explorer right that. So ticketing is a really a better example than gating but gating is a term that we use so that you create a token and you show me that token and we're going to use some of the concepts in drop. So when one of the product that we are going to come out with is b2b 
which is two merchants transaction, not C to B, right now it's C to B. And one of the things is a merchant would give you a token saying that as long as you have the token, you can send me invoices. Why is that important? Is because if you've seen products like Zelle, there are all these payment products where there's a lot of uh, fraud takes place. I want to authenticate, I want to make sure it is you who sent me and I'm not paying someone else. So NFTs have lots of use cases. It just said most of them have gravitated towards the, the, the images and the pictures and art collection. That, that was wonderful, but now you're going to see real use cases. So that's why we invested in the NFT Explorer. I think there's going to a lot that's going to happen with it. 100%. And I know we talked about some of the recent milestones and achievements. What are some of the upcoming milestones and achievements or forward-looking statements that you would want to give to uh, the community that might be interested in what Drop is building? So if I, I, I can tell you immediately what's going to happen because it's, it's right there. I mean, I, I'm, I've, I've seen the code, I've seen the image. One of the things that we're going to be launching very soon, and I'm talking about in a week, like next Tuesday, is uh, a WordPress plugin that doesn't sound exciting, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain you what it is. It basically, 85% of the websites in the world are built on WordPress, which is which is a large number. And many of the content providers, publisher, music, streaming, all of those are built on the, on WordPress. So we have this little plugin where, which you can, which anyone can download as a merchant, as a publisher, and then you can, without writing any code, you, you download it and you can enable content to be micro walled. That means you, only I, the purchaser, will have access to it and you can charge anything from one cent to $2,000. I mean, that, that's the range you can, but you can monetize content right away without writing any line of code. Very excited about this because this opens up the entire market for micro payments, for content and streaming, for anything that's sold digitally. That's one of the things that we're gonna release. Uh, the other thing that's gonna come out is a merchant point of sale, which you can to take in-person payments like that's So there are some immediate goals. We are working on a B2B play, but really, if I just want to share what should people expect, we will most probably have some sort of real-time payments, banking payments at some point in the end of the year in, in a small step in where we can pay merchants with RTB. And then uh, we're hoping by May we would have the complete chain of real-time payment. There are there are some technology challenges in front of us, and then there is also something that the banking industry is trying to figure out, something called RFP. And if they figure that out soon, it'll take us six months to build that. RFP is request for payments. So there are, there's a lot that's going to happen in the next six months. Well, we certainly uh, appreciate your time, Sushil. Sure. Again, uh, from Genfinity's standpoint. Thank you very uh, much. So Shields, the CEO of Drop, obviously the big news over the past month was uh, Drop being integrated into the FedNow Service Provider Showcase. Massive achievements. I think we had a little bit of alpha within this as well. Uh, if you guys know what the clearinghouse is and real-time payments through the clearinghouse, you guys can do your own research on that, but uh, yeah. looking forward to the NFT Explorer as thank well. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you really so much, Shields, 100%. Thanks. Thanks.